and trees are on the owner of New Forest Sewing Studio. So every month we do a monthly make, um, as you've seen from our previous videos, if you've watched any of those. Um, so this month we're going to make the um, Maison Fauve Atlas blouse. So we're going to, I'm going to do the blouse, not the dress. Um, you get several options um, on the pattern. So you can make it long sleeve, short sleeve, you can make the dress or you can make the blouse. So I'm going to make the short sleeve blouse, this one here. Um, just because I'm looking forward to spring really, <laughs> here in the UK. So um, I'm going to make that because I think it'd be nice for spring and summer. Um, I'm making it up in our um, uh, pink dusk, I think is the name, the colour of the fabric. Uh, and it's a lovely cotton hemp fabric from um, Merchant and Mills here. So I'm going to be making it in that. Um, so the first thing we need to do is the pleats. So I'm going to angle the camera down and show you how I mark out the pleats to start with. Okay, so on the front piece there's quite a lot of markings um, to put in, um, as you can see on here. <laughs> um, so first of all I have marked in the um, legs of my, just snipped into the end legs of my dart and put a tailor's tack in there for my dart point. Um, I've also put some tailor's tacks in this piece here, um, which is helping to mark the, the little button placket when it goes on. So I've marked just at the end there, um, the size I want, size 40 I'm doing there and there, and then marked at the end of the um, my line there, out onto the fold. Okay, so I've done those. And then I've uh, let me take that off, and then I've marked out with some um, carbon paper. I've marked out my um, lines to put my pleats. You can see those, you can just about see those um, lines to put my pleats in there. Okay, and actually, it's going to look quite well on this side. So um, then we just need to do the other side, but actually, it has marked through quite well. Onto the other side, but I'll show you how I do it anyway. So if yours didn't mark through to the other side, although things set, I know my piece looks a bit um, unwieldy for a blouse, but I just cut it out to the dress size because I usually cut out my pieces. I'm not not great for tracing time wise for me. Um, so, but it's quite a straight hemline. So I just folded it up. Um, I just put my pattern piece on my fabric like that to where I needed it. And I just marked over with carbon paper and a tracing wheel there um, along the mark line for the um, blouse. Um, so then I can keep the pattern intact to use it for a dress as well. Um, so that's what I did for that. Um, then I'm going to turn this over this way because I've obviously marked it from the front the other way. But that's given me the markings that I need for this side. So I'm just going to pin that. So it stays in place in a couple of places. Line it up nicely along the top there. Just put it in there, so I'll put that up there. So pin that back on just so that you've got it in the right position in your fabric. Just put one down there on the fold as well, just to hold that in place. Okay, so like so. All right, so I've just put a couple of pins just to hold it in place. And then we're gonna to wanna to put our piece of carbon paper. So you've got the chalk side and the non-chalk side. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we're gonna put the chalk side facing down. Onto there, and then we can just mark through where we want those lines to be. Always want to cough when you're on a video. Don't cough any other time. Always want to cough when you're doing a video. <coughs> oh. Right, so just mark those down with your now the coughing is finished. Just mark all 
of those on there. And they'll come to you. might need to move your carbon paper about a bit but mine are slightly showing through from the other side so I'm quite happy with that. Um, that one there. So you can take that off. markings where we need to um, I don't know if you can see those I did it in white so you want to do it in something you can see it is chalk mark so it will come off when you wash it or sometimes it will brush off um, but something obviously that you can see but you don't want it to risk you know um, overly sharing too much of your fabric so um, they're marked on the right side of your fabric which is this one which is the outer side here so I'm just going to So it does look very big to start with, and that's because you've got all these pleats to put in place. Um, so I'm just going to snip those tailor's tucks there as well. I'm going to leave that in the middle like that. Right. Okay, so then we're going to um, fold our fabric. So we're going to fold um, the pleats. Now it says to start with this pleat on the outside. Okay, so the one furthest from the front. Um, so that's this size. So I'm just going to check which is the right side and wrong side. I think that's side and it's marked on both so I'm fine with that okay so we're gonna take your first one so we've you've notched along each little bit at the top of each pleat as well so on here along the top there um, you just notch into the top of each of your pleat lines, whichever line you are on your pattern. Um, I'll do those as well. Repin those. It's so similar both sides. Um, it's worth putting a mark on your fabric. Obviously, I know this side because I've drawn on the right side now. But um, if you've got that with your fabric, if you just put as you take it off your pattern, if you just put a mark on, you can. Um, Keep an eye on which side's the right side. I'm going to go with the outer side. <coughs> Put those back in. So we're going to line those up. Like so. Just make sure it's nice and easy on the jiggle. Once you do them one at a time, so it's a little time consuming, but it's a nice effect. So once you've got them um, lined up like that and pinned in place, do it one at a time. Um, so then I'm just going to give that a press with the iron. And then it wants you to stitch along that line that you've marked with your, um, with, with, that we've marked with the carbon paper. All right. So I'm going to go and stitch along that line. Um, and then... Um, I'll come back and we'll pin the next one on and then we'll go from there. Okay, so that's the first one stitched in place. So you're literally just stitching down that end, following the chalk mark that you've got on from your carbon paper. But actually, the um, it's it's a centimetre um, in width, so you can also use you know your centimetre mark on the machine. Um, you can use your seam guide as well to help follow along that and just keep it nice and straight. That's the main thing. So then it wants you to do the next one. So then we're going to do the same thing. So get your edges together at the top. There. Pin that in place. And then the same thing at the bottom. So just do 
Is usually find the middle one next, join up the middle somewhere, make sure those two lines yep, line up. So you're just looking at your line that you can see on the top and then the line that you can see underneath um, joins up. And then we're going to stitch down exactly as we've done for the other one. So then I'm going to do the other ones um, and also do the same thing from the outside in on the other side. All right. So I'm going to do those and then we'll come back and do the neck piece. Okay. Okay. So that's the pleats um, all put along the front. Okay. And they they um, press towards the side seams. Okay, and then it wants you to um, now it wants you to go along and stitch just across the bottom of each pleat. Okay, so just across the bottom here of each pleat. Okay, just to hold that in place. I'm going to do that next, um, and then we'll come back and I'll come back and we'll do the um, button placket. Okay, so um, that's the um, Oops, down there. That's the front um, such thing. So we've just stitched along the ends of these um, pleats there. Okay, so we've done that. Um, the next bit is to put the um, button placket in, which is a little bit complicated, but just try and do this step by step for you. So on the reverse side of your front piece of your blouse, um, I've just drawn down with a heat erasable pen. So from the notch marked at the top of the jacket here so that's the notch it's just that bit there on your pattern okay this piece there okay marking that marking that placket line just along the edge there this piece okay so you've got a notch there and then i also as i said earlier i marked my i marked the points of the placket here. So I'm doing a size 40, so I've just marked there and I marked there at the end with some tailor's tacks. Okay, and then I marked in the centre there where my that diagonal line goes um, with some tailor's tacks. So then with a ruler and a heat erasable pen, I've just drawn down from the top notch down, following through those tailor's tacks to get a nice straight line down to the bottom, and the same on that side. And then where um, this bit, where the notch bit is here, I was able to draw in the notch piece there. So it looks like so. Let's see what that's okay. Okay. So, um, and then on your um, pocket piece, which is this piece here. Okay. I've marked with some tailor's tacks, I've marked on my... Um, button holes, um, button markings just um, there, the four along there at the bottom. Um, and then I've also marked off the lines with some um, carbon paper again, just onto the wrong side, um, just so that I can get those lines in. So I've drawn those in with the carbon paper and um, tracing wheel again. Um, and it also wants you to put a strip of your, just interface this um, edge. So it's this edge here on the pattern. It just wants you to interface this piece. Okay, it does show you in the instructions on there as well. Okay, so that shows it a little clearer. Um, so then it wants you to position your, um, the right side of your, uh, button placket piece, this piece, to the wrong side of your blouse, um, lining up those lines. So you'll line up the notch at the top and that one there. Let's put that together. Okay. 
put that one there and then line it up again at the bottom down here so you've just got the corner of the to shot oops okay so you want the corner of where you're marking your bottom of placket bit there to the corner of that one there I'll show you when I bring it closer up so you can this one and the corner of that one there should match up with the corner of that one so make sure you've got it nice and straight And just check you're following along the same line along the way that you're on that one. And again on that one, so just pinning it through there and just checking that I'm getting the drawn line on the back of my blouse as well. So then it wants you to stitch down, so I pinned it like that, okay, all pinned in place, okay, so then it wants you to stitch down this line here to the bottom and then from there down to the bottom. So I'm going to do that first and then we um, cut down the middle and open up the plackets, turn it to the right side, okay, so I'll do that first. Okay, so. Um, we've got that piece stitched on, okay, down those, down both those to the end, not across the bottom and then just down there to there, okay. Um, and now we're going to cut down this um, middle piece here and into the sides. So I just need to turn that round to do that, but hopefully you'll be able to see. Just pins. So you're cutting through both your placket. Make sure you've got nothing else underneath. So, cutting through your placket and the bodice front of your top, both layers. Just to that top of your triangle bit there, okay? And then just angle it down so that you meet the point of your stitching, the end of your stitching. I'll show you what I mean. You have to be quite precise with these buttons, it's a bit like doing a welt pocket. Um, so just cut down into there and you'll oh, just cut down into the corner pieces here. Okay, and here. All right. Um, and then we're going to turn that all over to the inside, over to the side like that and that bit down there so I'll give that a press and then it's putting the fold marks in um, for the um, hang on let me get that right like that okay so um, and then you make the button placket bit with the fold marks so I'm just going to press that and then I'll press the fold marks in and show you how it works okay Okay, so um, once you fold it through to the right side, then your um, once you fold it through to the right side, then um, this piece, I show on the paper piece, then this piece folds like so. Um, and then that edge folds under. Along there. Like so. Okay, so it folds along that line. And then it folds along the outer edge. 
and then it folds like that over your seam to join there. Okay, so then I'm going to, it asks you to do it all in one. But I want to make sure this bit's really tucked in well. So I'm going to stitch down there first. So you're just, the edge of that where you've pressed that in, that's just going, just covering slightly over your stitch line, your seam line where you put your placket on. Um, so I'm going to go and stitch that first. Then when I've stitched that, then this side, in a similar way, folds back like that. Um, where are we? Goes, yeah. This one folds like so. Easier to show you from here than there. So this one folds like that and then folds over top of the front one like so and that edge again folds in um, just covering the edge of your stitching there and then this bit um, obviously the edge folds in there and then folds under at the bottom and that is the bit that makes that covers up and makes this piece at the bottom okay so I ask you to stitch it all in one but I'm going to stitch down that side first and then make sure I've got that covered in well at the bottom there. And then I'm going to stitch down that side and round to there and across. And then I can do my cross in the middle. OK, so I'll do that next and I'll show you what I've done. OK, so that's the um, placket stitched in place. That's just the tailor's tacks to mark my buttons and buttonholes. Um, so that's it all stitched in place there. So I cross stitched at the bottom, like it said, um, down and around there. As I say, I did do up this side first and then was able to place that over, um, get all that lined at the bottom there and then stitch. I just stitched around there, around there, down, across and up. Um, so that's that. So the next bit, the last bit on the front to do is the um, darts. So you just join your two uh, dart legs together, notched at the bottom there. Join that there. Um, find your dart point. So right sides together. Find your dart point. There. Join that in place. And then just mark, pin the other one, just to hold it, just to keep it flat. And then just with a small ruler, I've got this to hand, so I use this. Um, just mark from your dart leg there, with a heat eraser or pen or something, just um, down to your dart point. You can do it with a, with a thread if you've got a long thread on your machine, but if you're um, learning as you sort of more early, beginning is sewing, and you put your teeth in, um, it's easier to mark it with a pen. So I'll show that way on video. Uh, and then just again on the other side, so right sides together for your notches at your dart legs, then find the point of your dart, then put the tailor's tack, Open it there, just make sure it's sat nice and flat. Put it in between. Then mark from the dart leg to the point of the dart, like so, and then just draw and run in with a heat eraser and pen. Okay, so that's that marked there. Okay, so we're going to go and stitch from the dart leg end, back stitch there, and then stitch along and then stitch off at the end here. And I tend to just tie my ends off. Um, you can do a little thing where you back stitch in there, but it's just, I find it neater just to do off and, and stitch them off. Okay, so I'm gonna go and sew those. Um, and then it's the back piece after that. So I'm gonna go and get a cup of coffee and then we'll do the back piece a bit later. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the front um, completed now. So we've done all that. Okay, um, and I've just um, overlocked down my side seams and across on the shoulders uh, just to neaten my edges there. So that's the front done. So we put that to one side and now we work on the back pieces. Okay, so we want um, your back piece, which is this piece here, number two. Okay, um, at the top it has um, a notch mark here that you just want to mark in on the edge of your fabric, just a small snip into the edge of your fabric. Um, so they are there and there. Okay, and then it wants you to put a line of gathering stitches. So just keeping the thread ends, um, don't back stitch, just lengthen your stitch to the, as long as it will go about five or something like that, five or six, and just stitch two rows of um, stitches, long stitches between those two notches. Okay, and then we'll use those to gather up um, the top piece to join onto the yoke. So then it wants you to get piece three, which is the yoke piece, this one. Um, and then on the wrong side of your fabric, it wants you to put the first one um, along the back here. So I did put a little um, notch also in the back of mine, so I could help just gather that up evenly. So I'm gonna mark that in the center, pin that in the center, like so. And then it wants you to gather up the stitches so just pull the bobbin threads up just to pull those along um, and you want that to fit so that your notch on your yoke the other notch on your yoke which is this one here okay that you will also have marked on your yoke piece it wants you to just line that up so gather it in between I'll show you in a second just get them a bit more even. There we go, that'll do. Just pin those. And then join your other notch to the other side there. Okay, just join those two up. Pin that in place. And then we'll gather up threads, oops, I can get hold of them, <laughs> there we go, and then you can just pull them up, oops, I've got them wrong way, there we go, that's a little bit better, just get them pinned so they go perfect in the front, there we go, okay, so that's gathered those up, so just pin that back on, So get that like that and then just even out your gather stitches just along there so it's even. So pin that one in place there too. Okay and then just join the rest of the length across the top yoke. Like so. Now it says in the instructions to then stitch this in place and then apply your other yoke, the other side. Um, but I'm probably gonna do it all in one piece. It's only that little bit of gathering in the middle. Um, but if you're not used to it, you can stitch this on first and then join the other side. But I'm gonna do it all in one. Um, so just get a little bit there. Oops, two more pins. So that looks like that, okay? And this is on your wrong side. My Both of my sides look the same, so um, it's not easy to tell on, on the picture, on the video. So that's um, attached to my wrong side, okay? So the right side of your yoke piece to the wrong side of your fabric, okay? So then I'm gonna turn it over and get my other yoke piece so again this now it's right side to the right side of your fabric and then pin that 
So effectively, you're just sandwiching the bodice piece into your in between um, the two right sides of your um, yoke pieces. Keeping your edges lined up. Oops, oops, oops. I'll take that one out again now. Okay. I'll keep that one in there so I remember which is the right side. Right, okay, so I'm going to stitch along there um, my seam allowance, which I think is a centimetre. To use a seam allowance yet, do you know what we've done so far? <laughs> she says it right back at the beginning here. Uh, seam allowance is included by one centimetre, yeah. So one centimetre seam allowance all the way along the top there, okay, and I'm going to turn both edges up, okay. So I'll do that and then show you where we've got to. So I've um, uh, stitched that, attached my yoke piece, pressed it all, both ends up towards the top so the seam is sandwiched in between in there, okay? Um, and then uh, it wants you to just press it and then give it a top stitch along the top there, about five millimetres from the seam, mine's slightly less, but. Um, that's how I wanted it. Um, then um, it doesn't ask you to, but I decided to overlock my um, edges together at the top here because now we're going to fix that to the front piece. So I've also previously overlocked my um, edges of the front. Don't like going round. So right sides together. Um, so I also overlocked the um, shoulder seams and side seams of both my fronts and backs now. Um, so it just wants us a little notch, which I can just about still see, match up there, and the shoulder seam. So just pin that in place. So it wants you to do, it wants us to do the shoulder seams and then um, put the neck binding on. I guess because it's easier to do the neck binding before you've got the sleeves and everything else attached. Could do it later, but I guess it is easier. Um, Without less to, uh, and you can fold it out flatter as well rather than um, have it all in one. So just join those two shoulder seams. So we're going to stitch those at a centimetre seam allowance. Um, then I'm going to press those open um, and then we'll do the neck binding next. So I'll just show you how I've pinned those. There we go. So I've just pinned those in place. So the front on top of the back, so right sides together. So the right side of my front and the right side of my back um, together. Just pinned matching those shoulder seams there. Okay, and I'm gonna stitch them at a centimeter seam allowance and then press them open. And then um, we want to get our bias binding piece. So that's the neckline bias binding piece. This is this one here and it wants us to fold it um, into some bias binding, which I'll show you um, ready to put around the neckline. So I'll do that next. OK, 
Okay, so I've um, sewed the two sh shoulder seams. Um, now I decided because we top stitched at the back there that I would top stitch along here. So I've actually just folded them up towards the yoke and then top stitched along there. So um, I could have just um, neatened those edges off together. Um, so I needn't have done them before. I could have just neatened them together and then done it, but that's fine. Um, they're neat inside, so that's absolutely fine. So I've top stitched those. It doesn't say to top stitch them, but I thought as we'd done this edge, then um, I was going to do that one as well. So um, the next bit is to do the um, neck binding. So that's piece seven, which is cut on the bias. Um, like using your grain line arrow here. Um, so it just gives it a bit more, um, just gives it a bit more give. So it asks you just to press in, it into bias tape. So if you just press it in half with an iron, just press it in half like that and then open it up and then press one half into the center and then the other half into the center like so and then over like that. And then that makes your bias tape, okay? So I'll show you like that, all right. So then it wants us to put that onto the neck edge. So on the, I think it's on the wrong side actually. Let me grab the side first. So um, I'm gonna pin that. So just allow an overlap of about a centimetre or so because you're gonna wanna turn that round um, to make sure you leave a little bit, just about a centimetre at the end overlapping. Um, and then just pin that around on the um, wrong side of the neckline. That way, when we um, top stitch it round, we'll have a nice neat edge on the um, right side. So I'm gonna pin that all the way round, um, and then I'll stitch that in place and then I'll show you how we fold it over um, to do the other side, okay, and stitch around the other side. So I'll just pin that all around the neckline first and stitch that, um, as I say, that is to the wrong side at the moment, and then I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so we've um, stitched that uh, all the way around, okay, onto the um, binding, onto the collar edge from the wrong side, okay. And then it wants you to turn it over and stitch it to the right side. So I'll pin that in place on that side there, okay? And then we're gonna stitch around that edge there, close to the edge. Um, now the ends, it tells you to, um, in the instructions, it tells you to fold it over like that and then fold it over to the wrong side, um, but you have a raw edge left. So I prefer to fold my raw edge over the end like that um, and then fold it down like that okay I'll just make sure I've got all those threads tucked in um, and then stitch around there so I'm just going to pin that bit now I've got that bit round oops <laughs> when your pins are stuck together All right, so I'm gonna pin that all in place, give it a press, um, and then go and stitch around the outside bit. Okay, we've uh, stitched all around the neckline there. Okay, all around the bias binding. Um, so next, with the right sides together, it wants us to stitch the side seams together. Um, so right sides together side seam. So I've already neatened my edges. Um, I used an overlocker. Um, you can use a zigzag stitch for whatever on your machine. Um, so we'll just pin those together there. Okay. So again one centimetre seam allowance down both sides. Um, that's that one. And do the same with that side there. Okay, so let's pin those together. Pin one at the, it's better if you pin one at one end, pin one to match up your 
any seams, match any notches if you've got them. Um, and then just make sure it's all sitting evenly throughout. Um, that's fine. And then stitch them with a centimetre seam allowance. Um, and also the sleeves, so I've neatened the edges of my, I'm doing the short sleeve version, so that's just my um, side seam, um, sleeve seam edges. Um, and then with right sides together, I'm going to pin those together and stitch those sleeve seams at the same time. Um, so I've got to pin the right side of my fabric, it's difficult to tell. So I'm going to stitch those and then um, because I'm doing the short sleeve version then I need to hem the bottom of the sleeve um, so let's fold by a centimetre and then fold again by a centimetre to hem that short sleeve so I'll do that as well um, and then we can inset the sleeve okay. okay so we've um, so I've sewn the um, side seams together down the sides like so press them open and I've also hemmed the bottom um, of the blouse so it just asks you to press it up one centimetre and then press over another centimetre and then stitch along there around the hem um, so the sleeve seams so those two small sleeve seams I've shown you, shown you just now and then again, I've hemmed those, same thing, it asks you to do um, one centimetre and then fold over again a centimetre and stitch those. So I've done all those. So now it's just to inset the sleeves. So the easiest way to do it is to turn the blouse inside out, like so. Let's just make sure I've got this in shot. Blouse inside out. Um, and then... Um, it wants that's that side yeah so then it's um the notches are uh it has two at the front and one at the back um so it's a little bit opposite to how we would normally do it so blouse in the wrong side sleeve right side out then just pop one inside the other like so um, and then join up your um, threads. Um, join up your sleeve seam with your side seam, sleeve underarm seam with your side seam. I've done it that way because that's the side I always sew from. That's it. got a notch that joins up with the shoulder seam get that lined up that's it like so so just join all your notches together first and then this notch I'm pretty sure joins up with the um joins up with your yoke piece, the joint, the seam of your yoke. So I'll show you those points. So join up the um, underarm seam with the side seam. Um, the first of your two notches joins up with the notch on your sleeve. That notch joins up at the shoulder seam and then the notch on your shirt there joins up with the yoke. Um, so then just um, even that out and pin it in between. And then we're going to sew these in place. Um, and then I'm going to overlock around them um, just to finish the seam. Or you can zigzag um, which, whichever you prefer. Um, and then it's just the buttonholes and the buttons to do. So nearly finished. So just ease it in so just easing in you just want to um, sometimes you'll get you know it's like that 
Um, so the easiest thing to do is just to level it to the centre, pin your centre piece, pin it in the middle rather, like so, and on the middle again, pin it like so, and then again, it's just you've got a bit of ease within your seam allowance just to fit in. And then again here, and we're going to just ease that in there. Down there. And then just around this bottom curve here. So that's. Okay, so that's your sleeve um, pinned in place. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same with the other side. Um, then I'm going to stitch those centimetre seam allowance and then um, I'll overlock, it says overlock or overcast the seam, give it a press um, and then we'll do the buttonholes. Okay, okay so that's the um, sleeves sewn in. Okay, so I'm doing a short sleeve over, that's the sleeves sewn in. Um, so I've sewn those in and then I've overlocked um, around those um, and I've done my buttonholes. It does say actually um, to do your buttonholes earlier on, um, but I'd obviously missed that. Um, but it's no different to doing them now because you still do them once you've got the placket in place. So it's absolutely fine. Um, then I'm just uh, going to cut them. I tend to use a little buttonhole cutter on mine, buttonhole chisel. So I'll just those just put some fray stock on first of all so I tend to put a bit of this on um oh sorry this one <laughs> on first of all um just let it dry a little bit and then just cut through the buttonholes um so that's those done um so next it's just to sew my buttons on and then I'll which up here so these are my buttons um that I've chosen to put on um, so I will sew those on and then I'll get some photos in the morning. So good morning, this is the, try and get the blouse in a bit. <laughs> so this is the um, Maison for Atlas blouse. Um, you can make it in a variety of fabrics, uh, linen, light cotton, embroidered cotton, chambray, tensile, viscose twill, silk, lightweight fabrics. Um, but it does say you need to have it so that you can press it with an iron. And that's because of the placket piece here and the um, pleats that you've got along here. So you need to be able to press it really um, to make it easier to sew really. So um, yeah, so it's a nice, nice top. Um, so yeah, it's all pleats at the back. As I say, I just made the top, but um, I have left it uh, the length on the pattern so it can make it a dress. So the dress is just a longer version of the top. So it's nice and, um, comfortable nice and floaty uh, so 